Hey there people, it's Mr. Baumgarten back with another Shaper video for you. I hope you're ready to learn something really cool. We're having a lot of fun doing some 3D designing and printing. I know I certainly am, and if you're not, you're just not geeky enough. Discover your inner nerd. All right, let's get on with this. I have a few tools that I want to show you today. I want to show you the spline, I want to show you the loft, I want to show you the rotate, I want to show you the sweep, and I want to show you the subtract. So let's get on with this without any further ado. I have a brand new Shaper project here. Uh, I'm just gonna to go to the items. You can see there the items is empty. I'm going to just bring this around, click on the front view, hit my space bar so that I know that I am drawing on the axis. And I'm going to, yep, so I've got a sketch. Uh, and I'm gonna use what tool am I going to use straight away Let, let's start off with a line tool um, now this is on my 100 mil what do I want 10 mil 5 mil I want this on 1 mil lines so let's do that and then we'll lock it into place there we go now I know what side I'm drawing on Where's my Where's my plane gone? There it is. Zoom in on that. Okay. Now we can get started. Okay, so I've got one centimeter happening here on the big big squares. So let's just zoom in on that a little bit. And I'm gonna draw a line from halfway through this up to the top. And I'm gonna go across just a fraction and then down just a fraction. And I'm gonna hit escape and I'm gonna come down here, go out a little further and go up uh, just a fraction like that, hit escape. And now I'm gonna use the spline tool, which is in here, looks like that. And this just lets me click and curve, click and curve. If I come out here, click, curve, that's probably not what I actually want this thing to look like, but anyway, uh, click, oh yeah, yeah, this will work fine. Click, 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 right? What I have here is a shape, right? So it's fully self-enclosed. Once it is a fully self-enclosed shape, that is more or less what I want, uh, I can come down to tools and revolve and this will let me create a rotation around the shape and and do a rotating extrusion so what i do is i click the shape that i want uh, to ro rotate and then click the axis to revolve around and i want it to revolve around this line here so what i've done is i've created half of a shape right i click that little line there and there you go I mean, if it rotates a full 360 that's what it's going to turn into. You can grab the 360 and say, actually, you know, I only want 180 or however much you want, but actually I do want a full 360. All right, tick, done. And now if I paint it yellow, I have a Lego head. <laughs> All right, let's do a torso. So one of the things you're going to discover pretty quickly as you're doing these 3D modeling is that you're going to want to do pieces in parts. Uh, it'll work a lot easier if you break it down into individual pieces uh, as small as possible. All right, so I've clicked top and then I, uh, whoops, click on top and now I hit the space bar. All right, and so I know that the ground is the plane that I'm drawing on. Uh, and now I'm gonna have a go at a quick little torso. Uh, I'm just gonna use the line tool for this. And this is uh, according to the drawing I'm using as a reference torso is about 1.6 centimeters across. Um, I don't have the depth, so I'm just going to wing it and go for 8 millimeters. All right, and if I move this around, you can see, okay, I now have my uh, shape there. Uh, but rather than just extruding that up, I'm going to show you a 
different tool. And so what I'm going to do is let's just draw another one that's a bit smaller. Oh, this one's in the way. There we go. All right, finish sketching that. All right, now I don't want this here, so I'm going to click it. But instead of extruding, I'm going to click move, and grab the arrows, move it up. Now, actually, before I move it too high, let's just move it. All right, rearrange this. So I'm back looking at the top. Oh, I want the top view. Click that. Let's go back to move because I want to make sure that it is positioned right in the middle of that. There we go, 0.5. Yep, perfect. Enter. All right, but it is still kind of floating on top of it. Now I'm going to click it again. We'll go back to move. Okay, so total height. Let's just bring that way up here somewhere. And what I'm going to do now to do, to fill this in, go to Tools and Loft. Right, and if you're not sure what you need to do, just open this back up. Select the faces or the sketch fillings and guide the curves to Loft. Uh, and just a reminder, so you can either select them through here or you can select them through your items. So if I... And it's not letting me do that. Oh, there you go. Anyway... Uh, click that, click the other one, and you can see there uh, how it's proposing to join them all up. That doesn't look like it's straight. Did I rotate that at some point? Or is it just the angle that I'm on? It might just be the angle that I'm on. Okay, click it, done anyway. All right, and I have joined those together. And that works equally well with curves as well, by the way. Uh, it really doesn't look right, does it? <laughs> But if I rotate, anyway, we're not too worried about a perfect Lego person. But yeah, I definitely rotated that a little bit. Um, yeah, it works really well with curves. So uh, what's the next, like, yeah, if I just even demonstrate that, maybe let's just do that really quickly. Just kind of show you the kinds of things that it can do. So if I, and then I'll just delete it later on. All right, if I just draw uh, some kind of weird, wonderful shape, um, and then I might, let's go back to that spline tool. Let's just grab this and, oh, I don't know. Yeah, that's, that's not gonna work, is it? Um, over here put that in okay so I've just drawn a couple of random shapes All right but they're both on that ground level so if I zoom out and move them up Don't have, I don't have to move it over the piece because the join will take care of that as well. In fact, I might just demonstrate that. Let's bring that up there and let's, I don't know, move this way over here. All right. So if I want to connect this to that, to that, I go back to tools and I say, well, where was I? Loft, join this to that, done. And then go back to tools loft join this to that done all right so yeah you can go crazy with that 
right? That's just a nice way of, so anything that you can kind of imagine in two dimensions and you can kind of slice into its, into what the different pieces are, you can use loft that just fills it in and joins them up. Okay, so let's just get rid of those. Uh, all right, so we have, we did the rotate, we've done the loft. I'm now going to show you the sweep. Uh, let's just get rid of those silly shapes. There we go. So the sweep we're going to use for the arm. And so what I'm going to do here is, let's just bring this back to, where's my top view going? Okay, we're here. Uh, so, how big do I want the arm to be? Let's just make it. That'll do. All right. Um, so I'm going to have the arm. Let's bring that up a little. Over here, and let's just rotate it just a little bit. Uh, that's going to be the end of the arm and I want the arm to kind of come in to the torso here right so the, what I'm going to do is let's click this on front and the shape that I want the arm to do I can draw as a spine or whatever I want all right from here um, let's make the arm kind of up like that and then kind of bend as it goes into the torso and escape all right exit the sketching and if I rotate you'll see what I have here is a line that is nowhere near where I'm actually wanting the arm to be but that doesn't matter so long as it presents this the curve the shape that I want the arm to take watch what happens now so I go to back to tools and sweep. All right, select the face or close sketch to sweep. So I'm gonna select the face, all right, and then hit next. Select the lines or the curve for the spline. So you hover over this, click it, and look at that. If I move that around, a very nice curve that follows that line. Tick, accept, done. All right, now it's kind of kind of got this awkwardness happening here, but that's okay because I'm gonna just select it. It's that piece there, oh, that was a good guess. Okay, and I'm just going to move it, yeah, in, move this down just a fraction. All right, and there we go, I'm happy with that. Well, I might move it across a little bit more. Um, okay. Now, when I'm done, completely done with this, I can make it a join or use the union tool to kind of join the two pieces together. And then they'll be forever just become united as one piece. Um, sorry, uh, union. Yeah, so, so don't do that until you're kind of ready to make it one big universal piece. Uh, okay, the other thing, <clears throat> so the other tool I was also going to show you is, um, so what's that, That's, we've done the rotate, we've done the spine, we've done the loft, we've done the sweep, let's show you just the uh, subtract. So union will join those together, subtract will take a big chunk out, all right, um, and use one shape to take out a chunk of another shape. Um, so let's what do I want to do um, all right I mean this this thing here should have a hole in it you know so that you know and then there's a, a round piece here that kind of sticks out so that the head can fit onto the torso of my Lego piece um, you know and I would probably like if you know I would probably use the offset and then tick that and then do a bit of a upward ex extrusion to kind of make a hole all right so yeah I can do that okay or if I undo that 
let's just for the sake of argument do it more using using the subtraction method all right so if i come over here let's make a square hole i don't know just because or let's just do some kind of weird shape uh okay sketch let's go back to the splines and just i don't know let's draw uh da 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 It's a pretty wonky little part, but you know, um, but we can fix that. We can crack this. Um, oh, cancel, cancel, cancel. Um, yeah, let's fix it up. I don't know why I decided to draw that up. Uh, okay. And. Read that thing. All right. So supposing I want that, I want to have a hole of that in there. All right. So let me shift back. Um, I can. Uh, so let's select this piece. Bring it. Move. Bring it across to where I want might also just make it a little smaller select that body and then yeah it's on move so bring it up all right so i want it about that much okay so now i can go to tools and subtract. Now you've got to make sure you get the order right. Select the bodies to remove from, which is going to be this one. All right, just note, notice it goes light gray, so select that, yep. And then select the body to be the remover, which is that one. All right, so I'm keeping that, subtracting that, tick done. And now you can see that I have a lot of half size hole. All right, so using one piece to subtract from the other. Okay, so to create your 3D masterpieces, splines, lofts, rotating, sweeping, subtracts, unions, these are the tools that are gonna to be your friend. All right, learn them and learn them well. Make all your pieces separate and just join them together when they're done you know so if you're doing a person you're going to do yeah do the head separate and even within the head like you probably do an ear separate and then uh do a copy and uh flip it and then you know bring it over to the other side you do the nose separate and then uh, union it on um you know and all that kind of stuff same with the torso and then the arms and the legs and the feet and the hands and the fingers and everything else. Make them separate and just join them together when you are happy with each part of it individually. Also, anything that you're going to want uh, printed using different color filaments, keep them as separate pieces. So in this case, if I was going to print this off, you know, finalize this off as a Lego uh, figurine and I wanted uh, this, where we, this thing here to be printed in yellow as is the classic then i'm going to keep this as separate and not join it onto the rest um, because i want this to be printed in a yellow filament and then this other and then the torso might print it in who knows what color but you know um yeah your different filament pieces should be in different uh, pieces and then you join them together after they're printed all right and so you, you design them up in such a way so that you can clip them together or glue them together after the print all right that's an important thing to keep in mind anyway i hope that has helped give you some insight as to how you can create some weird and wonderful shapes if you want to take this and to finish turning it into a lego figurine this was the image that i was having as a reference picture in front of me um see how you go anyway uh this is mr born garden signing out